release the hype engine. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League is the definitive director's cut of Justice League. Determined to ensure Superman's ultimate sacrifice was not in vain, Bruce Wayne aligns forces with Diana Prince with plans to recruit a team of metahumans to protect the world from a approaching threat of catastrophic proportions. Written by Chris Terrio, directed and story illustrated by Zack Snyder, starring Henry Cavill as Superman, Ben Affleck as Batman, and Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are new here to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe and turn on your bell notifications. Wait, wait, let me just say that again. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Boy, we have a lot to cover in this review. Um, the main question is, is it better than the 2017 theatrical version? Yes. Yes, it is. You can bet your student finance and your left toe that it is a better film than the 2017 garbage that we got back then. And let me further on to this point right here. Young sir, are you ready? Okay, I got you. You young lady, are you ready? Okay, I got you. Now, do you all understand what I'm talking about? When I say, when Zack Snyder directs Wonder Woman, do you understand where I'm coming from now? When Wonder Woman showed up at that bank scene, Right, and that scene overall was better directed, right? The ass whooping that she laid on these terrorists, right? We're not talking about the kitchen sink. We're not talking about chins being spun back to Timbuktu, back to Narnia. We're talking about a monumental, biblical ass whooping. She threw one hook and one bedroom hit the ceiling and the other guy went behind her, right? I lost my shit with the boys. Yeah, <laughs> it was fucking immense. Then she spun, kicked one dude in the chest and I'm pretty sure all of his intestines have now ended up in his calf muscle. Lord have mercy. Uh, it was phenomenal. <laughs> oh man, but Zach, you can just straight away tell with this film that his stamp of approval is all over it from the opening um, into the fight sequences. And, you know, when Wonder Woman was blocking all those bullet shots, it, it gave you the resemblance and the, ex the exposition back to when Fiora took on those three soldiers and, and kicked their asses in the space of one second with a couple of punches. I mean, you know, it's that type of immense directing that we get from Zack Snyder. Uh, going into Zack Snyder's Justice League, um, one of the discrepancies from people going into it was possibly the, 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 the runtime with it being a four hour movie. With me, when I went into this film, I had watched the director's cut of Watchmen, which was three hours long. I watched Batman v Superman, the ultimate edition, which was three hours long also. Um, so I was completely ready for my spine to come out of my ass when I was going to watch this four hour film. And it, it, it was not a hindrance to me whatsoever. And I also think that the chapters um, being integrate into the film. I think that was a really good hook for the audience, you know, um, even if they did feel maybe like they might have been getting tired, maybe after the two and a half hour point, you know, it was a really good hook to have in the movie because it's almost like, is it, well, I don't know, maybe I feel tired and um, kind of thing I'll give it. But then there is a, another question being asked. And I think 
that integration into the film was um, really well applied. In the famous words of Ray Fisher, he said when he got an early viewing of the film, he said that this movie is not a, a free meal course. It's a seven day feast. Because not only is Zack Snyder's Justice League a superhero movie, it's also a origin story for Cyborg. You know, with Man of Steel, we had a story of fathers. In Batman v Superman, we had a story about mothers. And in Zack Snyder's Justice League, we have a story about family. And you really do feel like Cyborg is really at the heart of this story. And, and I mean, Zack was not playing any games when he said that Cyborg was the heart of the story. You know, I mean, everything from his character decisions, his first person ideology, his everything, all the fun, good fundamentals of good writing is what we got with Ray Fisher's Cyborg. And I, all I can say is, man, like I'm truly happy for Ray Fisher that people got to see the true vision that was intended for that character, you know, and it re his story really did resonate with me. And that is what is the significant difference between Zack Snyder's um, cut of his movie compared to the 2017 um version you know in the 2017 version you know we got a lot of just you know third person dialogue as to what happened to him and it, you know it didn't feel as cathartic and it didn't really hit home on the flip side we then have Steppenwolf and in Zack Snyder's Justice League he is uh, he is formidable you know, I love his character design. He looks completely different to the 2017 version. He looks more intimidating, more menacing. Um, and, you know, with his design, the visual effects of him. And there is a really great um, reference to Alien um, with his, you know, with an attribute that comes with his kind of living organism um, armour. You know, and I thought that was a really nice um, tribute from Zack, you know, a good tribute to um, Ridley Scott and his alien films. And I also didn't think that with this film that we were really going to get as much dark side or as much Dasan than I thought that we would. So it was a welcome surprise. And these characters interwoven with Steppenwolves arc given a more clear motivation and purpose you know it all makes it all makes perfect sense as to why he is there in the first place now with their character arc i can't specifically go into spoilers about it because then if anyone's that, that hasn't seen the film and i just kind of mention it in this review this non-spoiler review then that'd be kind of stupid so I pretty much anticipate that there is going to, I'm going to be doing a live spoiler talk so that we can just go into more detail uh, tomorrow. The action is, it, it is second to none. You can't even really, you, you know, you can't even really put the factual version in the same sentence with the side of the Snyder Cut. It's kind of disrespectful in a way. And I think it was a brilliant idea to have, have this movie as R rated because I think it adds a lot more gravity and, and it ups the stakes, especially with these characters. And, and, and with how these characters are written, as, as all of them are three-dimensional, um, even with Bruce and Diana, uh, you know, they're not, they're already solidified, but the, the movie does a really good job of reinventing them, finding new ways of, you know, of making their characters likeable. And, and with the R rating, you know, you know, you, you really do feel for all of their lives because, you know, um, with one swipe of Steppenwolf's axe, it could be all over for them, especially like, you know, for a very human character like Barry Allen. You know, you, you know, one swipe from him, it's all over and you're kind of you're on tender hooks as you're watching the film. Up until this point with the MCU, well, sorry, the DCU, MCU is a different universe, Jesus. Um, <laughs> but you know up until this point we've had 
we've had Superman in in this universe be solidified. We've had Diana be solidified with her origin story, um, being involved in BVS, and now with Zack Snyder's Justice League, um, and then Cyborg as well. Um, but characters such as Aquaman and Flash, you know, if we really cast our minds to 2017, and, and if Zack Snyder's Justice League had just come out during that time period, Aquaman and Flash would have, you know, we would have not known, uh, you know, like now we know that there's been an origin story with Aquaman, uh, and we know in the future there'll be a a soul, a movie with the Flash next year. Um, possibly depicting his origin story um, but what Snyder is so good at doing is that it's almost like as if Snyder already knows what their origin story is you know so you get a lot of depth with their characters written in third person um, you know especially in the conversations between Aquaman and Volkov. And it was good to see William Dafoe engage in that conversation with Arthur Curry. And, you know, it really does, it really does depict how much during that time period with Aquaman as a character, how much of, of him that he really was a drifter, him going from town to town, just, you know, and you can, and, Snyder un really understands the ethos with Aquaman, you know, the fact that he doesn't want anything to do with team ups and, you know, with superheroes and these super beings. Because as we know now with the Aquaman film, is that all that backstory with his mother, you know, Atlantis coming back to hunt her down, to kill her because of, you know, marrying a, a, a human, you know, so. As far as Arthur's concerned, he doesn't want anything to do with teaming up with super beings because he knows how callous that they can be. And you, and you can really see it being perpetuated really well in Zack Snyder, uh, Zack, Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know, and, it, and it, you can really feel that with, with his character. And just to add is the, what kind of caught me off guard, but it was, uh, a welcome surprise was to see Amber Heard putting on a um, this this British accent for Mira, and I'm like, why do I like this so much? I can't be the only one that felt that way when she was doing it. Um, that must be in Snyder's vision of the character, um, you know. And we also get to see Snyder play play about with an ability. Um, that that mirror does on Steppenwolf and that was really good and how can we not mention Tom Hulkenberg aka Junkie XL's incredible soundtrack um, for Zack Snyder's Justice League and call me mad you know I think that with the work that he has done with that soundtrack I mean why shouldn't it not be critically acclaimed and you know that soundtrack can go to uh, the academy to be nominated and so on i truly think it is that good i mean the the immovable soundtrack superman rising part two the remix on flight i mean come on i mean come on i mean if that is not worthy of any critical acclaimed awards Man, I don't know, man. I've got no hope. <laughs> I've got no hope for these award ceremonies anymore if that doesn't doesn't get nominated. And and it isn't a secret with Zack Snyder's Justice League. And one of the signing points with this film was the black suit Superman. And um, for some reason, I see a lot of people asking the question of why does Superman have a black suit? And funny enough, I see a lot of See a lot of channels that say, "Oh, he just picked it because he wanted to pick it." I don't think I don't think it's that, because I think there's more of a poignant, harrowing thing as to why um, Clark has picked that suit. As we remember with the events of BVS, 
you know, the last image that people saw Superman in the public eye and on the bra, huge worldwide social media, the whole, all eyes on him, social media tabloids, the lot, you know, was him as like this terrorist figure, basically, you know, with the whole, with Lex Luthor blowing up the Capitol and, you know, leading people to believe that that Superman was the 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 um the culprit for that happening, and I think it's associated with him not wanting to be you know enamoured with that image, and that's why he picked the black suit, you know. And then people go with a scientific route as to he picked the black suit because you know the whole scientific thing about when the sun. Sun, uh, the color black absorbs sunlight quicker than any other color. You know, you can go with that route, but I would like to go with my first theory based on that. And his entrance was epic and it was everything that I wanted. And, you know, I, I've gotten to the point that with Henry Cavill Superman, I'm so fascinated with this character that I literally get goosebumps when he just flies. And he has like he he doesn't even need to throw a punch, and I'm like hooked to his character. If Cyborg is the heart of this story, then Flash is the soul of it. You know, create your own future from your past, and it's all right now. When I saw that scene, it took me back to when I was. 12 years old and I was watching Iron Man for the first time. It reminded me the feeling of why, why is it that I got into cinema into the first place, you know? And that scene was a love letter to all of the DC fans, to DC fans um, and to all of the people that have got behind Zack Snyder's vision and you know, in that moment, I went from in the critical process of, you know, trying to tick off things as to what is making this film good. And then when it came to that one moment, I completely forgot about everything else. And I was completely in awe of just that one moment. And for me, that has got to be one of the top five moments in cinematic history. It, it is brilliant. Um, and I think, I think Zach done a great job with the character of Barry Allen. Another scene that I really did enjoy was um, the conversation between Joker and Batman. And there's something so truly honest about the dialogue in that scene. You know, it doesn't beat around any bushes. And in a, it's funny because it's it's. We know what Batman says to Joker, and it's a moment where you're not really meant to laugh, but you do. But I don't think the the feeling of the laugh that came from me was that I found it funny. It was actually because it made me feel nervous <laughs> the way that Batman was talking to Joker. I was like, "Good grief! This guy is he, he's about to go full psycho mode. But <laughs> he's gonna be the one that's gonna go full Arthur flip mode, if anything." You know, and, you know, and I think that with Jared Leto, I think he's found the right range with his performance as Joker. You know, he's still quirky, you know, but he's now a more minuscule, you know, and I love his laugh. It's a weird, a smoker's cough, sorry. And, you know, I, I, I want to see Jared especially with how that i mean that that that, that post credit end credit scene turned out i, I want to explore that out that arc as to how they got to that moment with all those characters there now this is the deal breaker now because there are still a lot of people that say that the differences between the Snyder Cut and the 2017 theatrical version is that they say it's still a movie about collecting boxes. Now, here's the thing. 
everyone, listen to me. You all have to cast your minds back to 2017, okay? So, and it was in the pipeline that in 2019, with um, Ava DuVernay, that she was going to be doing a New Gods film, 2019, two years prior to, the, to Zack Snyder's Justice League, if it had all turned out well, you know. Um, and you can specifically see that when Snyder talks about the mother box, mother boxes, that all that dialogue is all in third person, right? Meaning that he it's specifically done like that, so that when if it did, when we got to 2019, that that New Gods film would have just explored the origin, the first person ideology, especially of the relationship between Steppenwolf and Darkseid. We get told in third person from Dasad that Steppenwolf betrayed um, Darkseid. But we're not shown. We're not shown what's really happened. And I feel like the studio, Warner Brothers, has has got Ava DuVernay to depict what actually happened. You know, if there was no New Gods film, of course Snyder would have shown us. He would have, you know. So that is ultimately what why Snyder had the dialogue about the moth boxes in third person. So that basically all he's doing is just, I mean, now he's just left it perfectly all on the platform for Ava DuVernay to just show us the origin. Why did, why did Steppenwolf betray Darkseid? And then when we look back on Zack Snyder's Justice League, it, in a way, it will make an even more enjoyable experience, you know? And I think it would be the same thing with the Flash movie. If we get the origin story, right, and it is good, and then and then when fans relate back to Zack Snyder's Justice League and they watch that film, they will realise that really what the spectacle of what Snyder has created. And, and it was confirmed, it, it was shown a couple of days ago where people were talking in context as to why was the dialogue in third person between Steppenwolf and Dessard. And then Tom King, who's a co-writer on New Gods with Avery DuVernay, um, he basically gave a wink as to, yes, um, in the New Gods film, they will touch upon their relationship more in depthly. And I really do hope that that is the case, you know, and they can go more into detail about how the mother boxes were created by High Father and all the, um, you know, the, the war between the old gods, the new gods, and go a little bit more in depthly about that. We've only seen as to why did Darkseid come to Earth and so on and so forth. But like I said, in a spoiler talk, I will go into more depthly about all of those points, especially with the mother boxes as well. Uh, but guys, it's going to lead me to give Zack Snyder's Justice League a 10 out of 10. Yeah, it was everything that I wanted. It was everything the fans wanted. And I'm so grateful that he got to show his vision. And, you know, I just couldn't be happy enough as general as a fan and for him as a filmmaker, uh, as somebody myself that one day hopes to do films. You know, if I... If I had five, if I could have five percent of the love and the appreciation that the fans have shown Zack Snyder, that would be enough for me because the fans have really gone beyond beyond comprehension for the love that they've given to Snyder, and 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 they are really a class act. The money that was raised for suicide prevention, uh, mental health. Uh, awareness you know this whole thing really is just some of the most inspiring inspiring things that I've seen um, in the lead up to a film you know and, and it leaves you with hope uh, you know and um, 
I mean, I can just say in general, thank you to anyone that just got behind the movement. Thank you to any of the subscribers here that, that chipped in to the charity, this and that. I, I know I did. And we, we all just came together and we just played our role, you know, for a good cause. And we should all be extremely proud of ourselves. Now, the only thing is left is to restore the Snyderverse. Guys, thank you all for watching. Um, hope that if you're new here, I hope that you've subscribed and enjoyed my rant um, talking about Snyder's work. And um, also be sure to check out the independent film that is, um, that is going ahead in April from now, which I'll be starring in and acting in. So a donation will be greatly obliged. Guys, thank you. Restore the Snyderverse. See you in the next video.